Hey guys, my name is Srividya, and I'm one of the early engineers at Hedwig here, been here for almost three years now. So, uh, so far today, you guys have seen how Hedwig works for primary storage use cases, right? So I'm going to introduce this concept of converged backups, where Hedwig can be thought of as both the primary and the secondary storage. So uh, to start with, what exactly is data convergence? So when you say that your primary and secondary storage, both, is coming from the same single distributed storage platform, we can call that uh, as a data convergence situation, right? And how exactly does Hed Hedwig perceive this converged backups? This is via scheduled snapshotting mechanism. And uh, let's say, uh, how exactly is scheduled snapshots going to help in data convergence, right? So let's say that the first primary, uh, first snapshot is going to be coming from your primary environment. And when you want to revert to one of the older versions of snapshots, which is again residing in the primary environment, in this use case, both the, both the primary and the secondary storage is going to be residing on one single platform. Well, yes, we can argue that in traditional systems, this wouldn't fly definitely because both the primary and the secondary sitting on the same box is definitely not thought of as a good design. But come on, we're talking about modern storage systems here where everything is going to be truly distributed in nature. So this becomes no longer a big concern for the use case, right? And um, now, now, given the introduction of how we are perceiving this whole converged backup space, let's get into more details about it. Starting from the basics, what definitely are VMware snapshots, right? So VMware snapshots are, in a crisp definition, uh, point-in-time copies of the v virtual machine's disk images. And that said, they're primarily used for restoring uh, VM in case of failures or error scenarios. And now, what Hedwig perceives as point-in-time snapshots? So uh, in the process, there are three main processes involved when we say that uh, when we actually take a Hedwig snapshot on those virtual machines which are running on Hedwig data stores, first step being the creation of the VMware snapshot. The second step is basically the creation of Hedwig snapshots. So uh, I mean, based on the, the abstractions that you guys would have heard earlier this morning about virtual disks, Every virtual machine consists of a bunch of disks. Each of these disks translate to virtual disks at Hedwig's end. So when we say that we take a Hedwig snapshot, we actually take the snapshot of each of these individual virtual disks that are act involved in backing up the virtual machine. And that said, the final step in this process is going to be consolidating the virtu VMware snapshot we first started taking um, you know, in the beginning of this whole process. So now, now let's get into the details of how, what exactly happens when Hedwig snapshots are being taken. To do that, uh, I would like to introduce this notion of version, which is associated with every virtual disk. Every time a virtual disk is created, we have this notion of version starting from the very base version. And every time a snapshot is going to be taken, we can see the life cycle of how the version keeps getting incremented and how, in turn, it's going to build up a version tree. Uh, I thought it's going to be easier to visualize this if I were to like pull up an analogy to one of the open source uh, softwares like GitHub. Why not? Like snapshots are pretty much GitHub for storage, right? So in that context, if we consider a code repository in a GitHub to be a virtual machine in a rough uh, in a rough sense, where uh, there are like bunch of files in the code repository and there are a bunch of uh, disks in the virtual machines and things like that. Every time you take a snapshot, we are basically creating, um, like we are taking all the, we are inheriting all the changes that are there in the parent version, and we are moving on to the next version where we are going to write more data onto it, right? So that's typically what a snapshot is. And all of this branching and things uh, in turn develops a Hedwig version tree uh, at the background. Now that we have a snapshot created, we really want to know what are the operations that we can perform on the snapshot. Uh, to start with, there are a bunch of operations. I have listed a couple here, like deletion of a snapshot version, or cloning out of one of those older versions, or even like you know uh, reverting to a version of snapshot, for instance. So uh, talking about these roughly, I think uh, both Avinash and uh, everyone made it very clear earlier on, like the use cases of clones, right? So clones are very easy to like bring up a test dev environment, and you can define your own policies, what replication policies, and everything for a clone disk. So it makes it very easier to clone from uh, one of the older versions of snapshots that you have in your system. 
And that said, let's say that I have taken like 100 snapshots for my virtual machine. And now at that 101st snapshot, I realize that the first 10 snapshots are no longer needed and it's kind of obsolete. All I have to do is go ahead and delete that snapshot, those uh, older snapshot versions. And that kind of involves um, changing the version tree a little bit. Like we take the data from the versions that we want to delete, consolidate the data onto its parent versions. And that's it. We, like, we just go on with the flow as, um, and then we go ahead with taking the 101st snapshot, right? So this is typically uh, how we can uh, visualize a Hedwig snapshot process. And to emphasize, this is a metadata-only operation. There is no duplication of data involved when we take a snapshot. So I just wanted to emphasize that. I have a quick question. Yeah. Uh, the relationship between, you said, you said something, and I'm not sure I understood. You said a VM, the relationship of a VM, a guest, Mm -hmm. to a VDisk, is that a one-to-one -one relationship in Hedwig or no? Um, well, yes, uh, yeah, yes it, is. it is. So each VMDK points to its own virtual disk at our end. All right, so, so we treat a VMDK as a separate virtual disk. Okay. So each of the disks would be single virtual disks at the back end. So when you say get a VMware snapshot, you're actually classing the virtual machine? Yes, that is correct. You're not actually using VMware software snapshotting or anything of that nature? Uh, you guys use VMware tools to do that. We have to, to use, that. yeah. I'm sorry? VMware, VMware tools is going to quiesce it. <coughs> I understand the quiesce aspect. I'm worried about the, the snapshot aspect mm. of it. Yeah. Who's doing, you know, because they've got their own snapshot. VMware has got software snapshots. Yeah. Are you creating a VM snap, creating yeah. yours, and then deleting the VM snap immediately? Yeah, kind of exactly. Thing? That's right. the three steps that were involved here, right? That's the first thing is. being the creation of the VMware snapshot. And then we go ahead with the Hedwig snapshot, which is the metadata updates that we do at our end. And the final step is the consolidation of the mm. VMware snapshot, which basically goes and deletes the VMware snapshot we created. So there, yeah, okay, all right. Let's take a look. <clears throat> all right, so now let's get to the demo aspect of this. I, I saw you effectively trying to offer uh, Hedwig as both primary and secondary storage solution mm -hmm. to customers? Yes, that is correct. It's one of the yeah, it's one of the ways in which you could consume us if you want to. Not necessarily the only way. So I, I guess the question I would have then, are those um, converged backup snapshots, are they going to be replicated? So it's, it's really a metadata operation rather than a storage cloning or copying operation. So, you know, the challenge with having a backup, you want to have a backup on physical resources that aren't the same as the primary storage, if you, if you can. You want to have um, the metadata control structures separate and distinct, if you can. And if you're just using a snapshot, neither of those two conditions exist. Well, yes and no. Let me explain. And that, yes, about one thing that you said, you want to keep the data separate from the primary and from you know, what you've backed up. That's why I said it's, one, it's an option, right? When we talk about the metadata stuff, it's metadata associated with the virtual disk. And wherever the virtual disk goes, that metadata goes with it. Right? So it's just one of the attributes of the virtual disk, be it the version and the version tree. And the data that's written, the one that Bharat talked about, where the data process is separate, every piece of data that's written is also versioned. We didn't expose that level of detail at that point because it would have been too overwhelming. But this is kind of the right time to kind of introduce that. So as you snapshot, you get different versions <laughs> of the data that you're writing. So, so it's kind of like right, taking... Are the writes versioned and timestamped, but the actual snapshots are versioned as well. Yes. Okay. Uh, a couple questions coming up in the group. So, so again, going back to every VMDK gets its own VDisk. When that's attached to a VM, an ESXi host, is that exposed as a data store, each disk? No. Uh, the data store itself is your base NFS export. Okay. So the virtual disk, so just to draw a parallel, right? the virtual disk that you create of type NFS, right? that becomes your NFS export, and that's what is mounted to create a data store inside your uh, ESX host. Okay. Right? Now, inside that export, when you talk about NFS terminologies, you're creating files. Everything is a file. right? Mm -hmm. Now, the files which are of type VMDK, which refer to the disk files for a particular virtual disk, they get backed up onto a separate virtual disk that inherits policies from the base export. You guys get that? Is that clear? Kind of. No, it's not clear. Because yeah. okay, what yeah. you're doing is you're doing a snapshot to do the backup. 
And that's not a separate virtual disk. That's the same virtual disk. It's, it's no, like merely a, we're just trying a, to figure out how it works in production. A version of the virtual disk. I just want right? to know how it looks, what, what it's organized like in production. <laughs> First, Can you start there. Browse the data store, right? I think it'll be easier. No, go to your cluster. I guess you're saying the virtual disk is kind of mounted into that NFS space, I guess, but. Just say browse. One sec. I mean, a virtual disk is effectively a file in the VMFS data right, store. So wow. This is what the data store looks like, right? So this we are browsing, so we are browsing the same data store that's on uh, your ESX host in Hedwig. We mm -hmm. have the ability to do that. So each of these directories refer to a particular virtual machine, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Now, she went inside one of the virtual machines. So mm -hmm. these are all the files inside the virtual machine, mm -hmm. right? Now, if you look at some files here, right? Let's take hyphen flat.bmdk, right? Even though it is a file, click on this, disk details. So we treat this as a different virtual disk itself in its own virtual disk. So any write that comes to a VMDK file goes to a separate virtual disk, which has the name this 118512, which is nothing but the I note for that file. So is there a kind right? So when you take a snapshot yeah. of a particular virtual machine, right, what she explained, all you need to do is take a snapshot of only this virtual disk and you're done. Right, right. So, so I'm, I'm seeing basically you have the main, like a, a virtual disk that has the, VMF, the VMX file, the, the all the config files, yes. and then you're basically sub-mounting the other virtual disks into that space, into a name, into that namespace, under a folder. There's no submounting. It's you're just accessing a file. We rewrite the, we redirect the writes or reads to that particular file to this virtual disk that we have created. That's it. I see you're from a VMware point of view, from an ESX point of view, it's still doing file operations. <coughs> it's writing to the VMDK file. It's reading from the VMDK so, file. Yeah, I mean, right? I'm just trying to figure from a logical perspective: is it like a link? Is it like, a, I mean, I mean, you can think of it like a soft link. Yeah. Okay. That's that's, that's what I'm that's trying to get at: is how you're organizing yeah. this. Okay, thank you. Right, that makes it easier for us to snapshot a particular <laughs> disk very easily because we are just dealing with one, uh, what we internally call it a child V disk because it resides inside an NFS export and inherits all the properties. That's well, a huge benefit from that because I don't have to have a whole data store quiesced in order exactly. to do lots exactly. of snapshots. Exactly. I get that. Yes. I was trying to figure out, did I have, everybody was like, is it, oh, there's multiple, do I have 2,000 data stores? What do I have no, here? No. It's just so, one oh, data that makes, store. That makes sense, thank yeah. you. Plus, you achieve some of the benefits of having VWALS natively mm -hmm. without correct. having to do VWALS. Yes. That's correct. All right. So this is one of the vCenters where the Hedwig VCP, v vCenter plugin has been installed. And you can see that uh, you can connect to the Hedwig cluster via this. And you can perform, and you can also see the tight integration here. Like, there are a, uh, this kind of lists all the virtual disks that have been created for the cluster. You can get a, a list of all the proxies that are available for this cluster. You can also have the flexibility to create a Hedwig data store right from here. So this can be thought of the single pane of glass to manage your vCenter related operations. So that's it for demo purposes today. I'm going to be zooming into this feature here called the SLA domain. So what exactly are SLA domains? These are service level agreements which kind of define the periodicity with which you want to take the snapshot schedules and also the retention, which kind of dictates the validity of the snapshots that you have taken, right? So these are the SLA domains, uh, which are uh, pre-registered for a cluster. Like if I were to add one, all I would have to do is go and give a name for it. And you can see that the snapshot scheduling granularity ranges from minutes and all the way up to months. <laughs> so uh, depending on, um, like we have had some customers who have used this in the snapshot um, you know, scheduling scenario in a tiered fashion. Like you can have some VMs which needs to be like backed up like really quick, uh, I mean like uh, very critical VMs which needs to be backed up more frequently. So they would put them and uh, put us in an aggressive snapshotting schedule. And some more VMs which could be like a little relaxed uh, and then they could put, up, put, up, put it up in like um, more, uh, you know, spaced out scheduled fashion. So that's the flexibility uh, that you can achieve via these SLA domain scheduling. So. Let's say that I'm going to give this like every 30 minutes, for instance, or like whatever, every 55 minutes, and I want to retain the snapshot for like, say, uh, let five hours and things like that. So all I've, oh, I've just given the same name again. All right. So uh, now we know that this particular SLA domain has been created. And now how do we tie the virtual machines that are running on Hedwig Data Store to these domains, right? So that's going to be a simple click away as well. So uh, all we would have to do is go and look at the VMs that are basically running on this data store. Uh, just give me a second here. Click on the virus. Yeah. First stop. There we go. No. 
Oh, right here. Okay. So uh, if you see, I have some VMs, which the exact same data store which we were looking at in the cluster. So uh, they have been like, uh, uh, all I would have to do is like go to one of these VMs that are running on the Hedwig data store. And you see this option, all Hedwig actions, which kind of shows up for those, uh, those set of VMs. And also when your vCenter plugin has been installed. And all I would have to do is go and say schedule snapshots. And this will give me a list of all the SLA domains that have been registered for the cluster. And I can just go ahead and select um, any one that I would wish and then hit a save. And now this VM is going to adhere to the SLA policies defined um, for that. Yeah. Can we assign that based on folders or vSphere tags? Uh, you mean the VMs in association with the SLA domains? Yes. It's pretty much at the virtual machine level. So each individual virtual machine, I'll have to go in and do no, that. No, you can. It's just an extension for us. We just have yeah. to implement another API, which will let you do that at a folder level. Right. Today, we have just implemented it at a per virtual disk granularity or per virtual machine, machine granularity, granularity, but it's a simple change for us to do it. At a but it doesn't do that now. It does do it no. today. Okay. Can you do that programmatically? Yes. Yes. Through an, your API? Yes. yes, we could do that. All right. So um, now uh, we've spoken a lot about uh, reverting to a snapshot and cloning out of uh, a version of snapshot and things like that, right? So I have shown some, uh, I mean, let me just show you some examples of uh, doing that. And for that purpose, I have like uh, written a bunch of files to these VMs in an incremental fashion. And there have been snapshots going on on these virtual machines, um, you know, like as and when I have been writing some data over here. And you see that this has a lot of files in here and so is this VM. So I'm going to revert one of these VMs to the older version of Snapshot, and I'm going to clone from clone on the other VM to um, from an older version of Snapshot, and see what we actually achieve, right? So let's say that, um, and the way you would do that again is via these manage snapshot uh, menu option, which will show up for a VM. And um, let's say that I want to go back in time and like you know whatever I had like nine uh, nine p.m. last night, and let's say that I want to revert to that particular version of Snapshot. All I would have to do it is select this option here. And now let's uh, also put the other VM and clone that VM from uh, an older version of Snapshot. So I would again come to this page over here and select the version of Snapshot that I'm interested in. And I would be selecting this clone snapshot option here. And I can give any cool name for this. Let's say 65 even two clone oh, one, whatever, right? So now. Now I've basically done both of those operations. Let me just go and power on the clones and the and the snapshots that we uh, and the reward snapshot that we just did, and let's see uh, what are the diff of files that are present in this. Did you do snapshot operations based on an entire data store, like assign an SLA policy to an entire data store, and then snapshot off that? No, we we only do it at a virtual machine, machine level, level. Store, not at the entire data store level. Okay. But what we could do is we can extend. This to snapshot all the virtual machines in the data store. That's, again, so a simple change for us. But today, it's at a virtual machine level. The same analogy, the, the same thing that you asked in terms of folders can be done on a data store level, because we already know what are the VMs that are, that are running on our data store. Yeah, I'm just thinking in terms of scale. So if you have an environment that you are refreshing and you're you know, deploying test code against multiple virtual machines, mm -hmm. I don't necessarily care about QES and any of the data that's in there. I just need to be able to snapshot at this time, run through tests, blow it away, redeploy, that type of thing. So I'd be able to do it on multiple virtual machines. At yeah, time. agreed. So again, it's it's an API change or implementing a new API, which will just do that for every data store. Yeah, we, every could, VM on the we could enable like group scheduling. That would be really useful as well. But we have found that Scheduling at a virtual machine level gives you more flexibility based on the tiered uh, way of using the domains, right? What's the um, appropriate sizing recommendation for your metadata tier, Se seeing as you've got a lot of granular metadata operations that needs to be held in storage? Uh, I'm guessing so it's going to be slightly higher than usual. No, the rough ballpark is uh, what we have seen thus far, uh, about 0.5%. Of your and 0.5 percent of your data is your metadata, right? Okay. For non-deduplicated environments, but if you have if you use deduplication extensively, then we have seen it go between four and five percent because it just there's additional hashes and stuff that we need to keep. Right. But if you think about it, 0.5 percent is just extremely That's small. Quite small. Everything will just practically fit in RAM when you start running it on reasonably sized clusters. Thank you. 
And you can very well see that uh, the diff version is going to contain like lot less of files than the older one. So this is basically what I wanted to show you guys. Do, do all the storage nodes have to be homogeneous? Same amount of storage, same amount of uh, SSDs, that sort of thing? Or can they be heterogeneous? They can be heterogeneous. But typically, the way we have seen this kind of expand in deployments is you know they, you typically buy in bulk. So the first set will be homogeneous. And then right. the next set would be a completely different set. but it becomes heterogeneous over time. And in that case, you're using all the storage and all the nodes, you're not just using the lowest common denominator, right? We do a lot of intelligent things for placement and stuff like okay. that.